All right, Zack Snyder's Justice League is finally out, and I had the opportunity to screen it early, but I also wanted to dive in a little more and discuss some of the things that stood out to me, good or bad. But to do that, it would have to contain spoilers. So I sat down with a friend and fellow YouTuber, Ruben, from the Ruby Tuesday to talk about what we liked, what we didn't like, and we even went off on some movie-related tangents. Also, if you want my spoiler-free thoughts, I've linked my non-spoiler review in the description. So let's dive into this discussion. Okay, let's do it. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so you you watched it recently, uh, the the Snyder Cut, um, and I uh, I watched your review as well. I think we have similar ideas of what we felt about the the film. Um, I just wanted to jump straight in and say, did you notice? Because I know you were saying that compared to the first film, uh, it's been a while since you watched the first film, but there are some things that weren't in there. And th the first thing I wanted to point out was that, that there was this whole um, segment of the first film with this whole family that they just deleted, that just wasn't in there anymore. Do you remember that bit? No, no. Yeah, so right at the end of the, the first Justice League, there's this... Um, family where the flash has to go and rescue and, and the whole focus on the first film is that they're rescuing this family at the end and there was such a big uproar of like what why are you going this has got nothing to do with the film let's just get rid of it and i, I was laughing when i watched it i was like oh my gosh that's not even in the film this time <laughs> well yeah i think it would have made i wouldn't it wouldn't have made sense i mean i no. i liked i liked what they did include in this one um you know, because I felt like, like specifically with Flash, I mm. like getting some of his backstory. And I'm not, I mean, like I've, I've said in my reviews, I don't read the comic book. So I, all of my knowledge comes directly from what I see on the screen. Yeah. So I need them to, to invest me in these characters. And I think this one, at least Flash, I, I probably could have used a little bit more background on, um, mm. but I know that he's had TV shows you know, and different things to build that character out. So that's kind of on me, I think, a little bit to mm -hmm. also not necessarily be caught up to him. Um, I, it, now correct me, it, well, it, Billy Crup as his dad. Yeah. Is that a nod just back to um, Watchmen? I mean, is that a, a nod for Zack Snyder to just- I mean, it was Zack Snyder, wasn't it? So I imagine, so yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think he was the Flash in any previous versions. I could be wrong. I'm like you. I, I've, I've watched quite a few of the TV series of the Flash. I've read a few of the comics. My favorite storyline is Flashpoint. Um, so I'm really hoping that Ezra Miller's uh, uh, Flash film um, is going to include that, uh, which will be amazing because it's like the most popular and most interesting and darkest. That would that would keep it in line with Zack Snyder's dark universe. Uh, but it, it makes me more hopeful now after having watched what they showed us with the flash in this one. Um, obviously we saw the trade, the new trailer with the flash where, uh, he's, he's moving so fast that he loses his shoes. Um, which I, I loved, but in context, I thought it added a lot of weight to his character as well. It just made him more, less than the quirky character and more, uh, relatable. I did. I will. And I liked, I liked his, um, his awestruckness. That's not even a word, but whatever, we're going to make it up that, um, you know, because he's playing this younger guy and he's playing just this, this me guy. And yes, he has all of these superpowers, but just every time that he comes into contact, he's like, oh, you're, you're Batman, you know, and he grabs it. Can I have this? I just, I loved, I loved his portrayal of that because I do agree. It made him very relatable. It made him, just a very down to earth person where, you know, I think Superman and even Batman to, to some degree are, you know, they're elevated above us. Mm -hmm. they're, they're a little harder to touch. They're a little just farther away from us. Um, I mean, still very relatable superheroes, but th this and the way that Ezra Miller played him, especially the flash just is somebody that you could see hanging out with almost. 
Yeah, absolutely. I know a lot of the, a lot of the fans will be talking about Cyborg in this one because I think everybody was let down in uh, the previous film. It's hard for me not to compare it because I know that's something that, uh, particularly with Cyborg, that uh, people are just saying there was no Cyborg story at all in the first one. And so this one, he's pretty much like a focus. He's the heart. Um, and... I think like the father and son relationship is always somewhat relatable, whether you're male or female, that kind of family dynamic, you're willing them to, um, you know, sort their relationship out. So you have that real human touch to it. But then we see, I don't know if your jaw dropped, but we see his new suit, the way he can fly, uh, which is very cool. But when his mask came over it, I was just geeking out. I thought was I, I thought it was just really cool. I mean, I didn't get uh, not following who the character is. I mean, in this one, I, and see, that's the that's part of it, I think part of the weakest part of like the first one, you know. And I know we're really talking about just this newest version, but I didn't know who Cyborg was. I didn't know, uh-huh. you know. And so he's just kind of there, and so it didn't even allow me to connect. In this one, I get a full on character story, and yeah. so that's when I see him. I mean, there's the emotional arc where we see him uh, as as fully human, you know, non non mechanical, um, and just the struggle that he's already having with his father, you know, and just that family dynamic, and then going into he's been his mother's died, his, he's barely alive. I mean, you see even the 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 what is it the what his father is trying to go through that grief, but that drive to save his son. Um, yeah. And then you get to see the character growth of Cyborg within Justice League um, just become his own. You know what I mean? He fully like he's accepted it. He's been dark, but he's been angry about it. And then we get to watch him become the hero in this. And I, I like that, too. I mean, he's still he's still powerful. He's still brooding. You know, he's still. Yeah. 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 You, you know, has that has that shroud of maybe anger a little bit, but that drives him. But then we also see the softer side of him. And I I thought that worked well. Yeah. I mean, I I thought, so when we got the moments we had seen already, they had more weight to them. So there's that that bit where Cyborg's in, uh, he's taking over Batman's crab car and Alfred's like, uh, do I know you? <laughs> Which, you know, it cracked me up in the first time, but this time it meant so much more to me because you had that story. And I thought, yeah, that's what for me is the biggest improvement of the storyline really is that every character seems to have been given time. Uh, and that's possibly why it's so long. Uh, which boggles my mind because uh, I was wrong in my review. I thought they'd gone out and done a whole bunch of reshoots. And apparently there was only five minutes of extra uh, shooting. Everything else was from um, the cutting room floor. So they had all of this footage that they've just left and now they've rejigged into some like epic, uh, which leads me to Steppenwolf because we didn't have a story for him last time. Right. He like, correct me if I'm wrong. I, and again, just still going off of, off of my memory from just what I barely remember of the first one is that he just kind of shows up at the end and he's the bad guy that they have to fight. And we don't have, there's no emotional pull to him. There's no real weight as a villain in this one. I mean, I understand his motivation. I understand why he's doing it. You know what I mean? He's, he's been basically exiled away from um, dark side and is trying to gain that, you know, that, that good graces again. And yeah. so now you understand what he's doing. Yeah, it was, it's so much better. Even, you know, the, apart from the way he looked, which was incredible, the, the living skin, that you know, armor that was like moving on him. It's like, okay, you guys are showing off now. Well done. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's um, characters apart from the way he looks it was defined enough for you to not know that he, he's not the good guy but you care about his plight you like ah oh, okay i see why um i would have liked much more from dark seed but again uh, the way this film ends is what he intended to carry on with his um universe but so it's bittersweet. So let's let's talk about the the length of it and where you think it might go. Yeah. I, so I do. I did feel the time sometimes, mm. um, you know. And I think it's interesting to know that it was that most of this came from the cutting room floor. 
that he had already been there. And so that really, I think that speaks so much worse of the, the predecessor of the, <laughs> the first one of what, of how it just got destroyed and that vision wasn't captured. Um, I do think though, that sometimes in this first one, like we have that, that establishing scene with wonder woman where she's at the, at the museum or whatever that is, you know, and she gets to, you know, the, they have these characters that are just, um, I guess zealots, maybe that's the best word to call them where they, they just have, they have their own political or ideological agenda and they're going to blow up the city blocks just because, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're fight club. Yeah. yeah they're, <laughs> and they're wasting time for, um, you know, just so that the bomb can go off, you know, they have no intention on, on negotiating with the cops and everything. And so I love that we get to see wonder woman do her thing. I mean, you yeah. know, the speed, the, you know, the, the, whatever she does with her wrists. I mean, the, you know, the lasso, everything, all of that. I love watching that. Yeah. In this movie, it's unnecessary. You yeah. know, um, like we could have seen maybe a little bit of her doing something, but I bet that's a, that's a large chunk of time to almost establish a character that has already been established for us. You know, and not it's even- interesting that scene I think worked better in the original because we hadn't had what we have now with Wonder Woman. So we've got her sequel, we've got her movie, uh, and you know we've had so much more of her. But now looking back at that, you're like, yeah, that doesn't quite work. I mean, it is it's excellent, and I loved seeing her moving faster than you know speeding bullet. Very cool, uh, you know, geek moments. But yeah, in terms of pacing and tone, it's uh, yeah. It was a bit odd. There were a few like that. Um, Talking about that, the end scene, again, was me geeking out. So, well, not right at the end. There's this whole sequence where it's it's an alternate timeline, alternate universe, the the desert sequence where Superman is looking badass. He's got his black suit on. You know, all the geeks are going, woo, black suit, Superman. Uh, (laughs) And then we have Joker who just, I was like, you just put him in there because. Yeah. And that I like, I'm a little torn with that scene. I mean, I, I enjoyed seeing it, but mm-hmm. it was almost like the same type of uh, the beginning of that scene, almost in um, Dawn of justice where, yeah. where Bruce Wayne is having that vision. And uh, again, I'm in this one, I get more context because we heard, um, was it, was it uh, Bruce Wayne that says that she is that Lois Lane is the key um, and to protect her, to save her. And so I I get the sense that in this time, wherever it is, if it's an alternate timeline or if it's just years in the future, that Lois Lane has been killed for somehow. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, Superman now is just, he's pissed. You, 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 (laughs) you know, the most powerful (laughs) being on the earth is now mad. And so he's taking out his wrath on everybody. Um, but to see, I think it was gratuitous, really. I mean, and, and I still enjoyed the scene at the end. It wasn't, it doesn't take away from that. But I think unless there is another setup coming, yeah. this, this, why? You know I, had to, I mean, I absolutely agree with that because I was, I was reeling from the emotional moment that we just had and the story was completing itself. And then we have this, it's a really a juxtaposition. It just flips you on your head and you're like, what is happening? Cause there's no explanation. It just goes into it. And I'm like, what has happened? Like, it, is this real? Is this happening? Why? Who's dead? Why are you there? You know, where's the water? <laughs> yeah. And it just, <laughs> yeah, so we're that back, right. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I don't understand what's happening. The dark seed come. Did he kill everything? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you have no idea where this is in the timeline, and then why they're all. I mean, you, you kind of get a, a glimpse or an understanding of okay, they're they're trying to stop Superman. I don't know how, basically, all of them who are almost all mortals are are going to stop this guy. You know? <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but you know, the, then we get to the very end, and. I'm glad they explained it, but it also makes me a little um, just questioning is um, when we get to see Martian Manhunter. Yeah. You know, like in the, in the sequence 
with Lois Lane and uh, or oh, yeah, Lois Martha. Lane and yeah. Martha. Yeah, and she walks out and we see him change. Now I'm like, what? I I don't even understand what this is. You know, this it takes <laughs> almost like to a to a Marvel mindset is like, are these scrolls? What's going on? And so. <laughs> You know, like I have zero context for this. So I am glad at the end, I, I understand who he is. You know, I get a, a little glimpse of that, but it also now it sets me up to be like, okay, is this, are you teasing another character? Are you teasing a movie that's, that's coming because I'm intrigued, but if not, I'm bummed. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, that's how I felt. I was bummed because Marshall Manhunter is one of my favorite characters and seeing him in there and he goes, you know, I, uh, Marshall Manhunter, some people call me John or John James. You know, he's actually a cop, I believe, or detective. Um, and I think he knew about having to get Lois back into the fight, really, getting her out of it because she is a big, important part, and which is why he cares about it. So he goes in as Martha, you know, and tries to kind of pull her from that, which wasn't in the first film. We do have that moment, but he we never saw Marsha Manhunter. So that it changes the whole dynamic. It's very interesting seeing, you know, the two perspectives from the different edits. Like, wow, that totally changed the story. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent. Martian Manhunter, it's it's like, yes, great. It's like seeing a, a Green Lantern uh, with the ring floating and it goes on someone's ring and you tease it, and then but you never show it. You're like, sorry, never going to happen. That's what I felt like this was because for all intents and purposes, Zack Snyder said that he hasn't, he's got no plans to make another one because they shut him down back way back then. Um, whether there'll be another hashtag trending, you know, reinstate Zack Snyder's universe, it's possible. We got this one, but are we going to wait another five years for that? Yeah. And I think, I think if we do that, I think if that happens, it runs in the, this, uh, this franchise as it is that Snyder has built runs into some of the similar problems that happened with the X-Men that you have, so much time in between that I don't know what happened. I don't remember. You know what I mean? There's just been so many things that have happened just in my life. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the chances of getting everybody because they're so high profile actors, they may need to recast. And so then you get a different feel, a different dynamic because every actor is going to play that character slightly different. They can never, you know, every Batman is different and people are like, Oh, I don't like that. Batman. My Batman is, you know, uh, <laughs> that's my Batman. Uh, I like this Batman. I, th I think every Batman's good. <laughs> everybody has their own take of it. Yeah, Ben Affleck grew on me. Honestly, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't a fan at the beginning, um, but he he grew on me. I do like him as Bruce Wayne in this too. I think mm. that, and can, maybe that's just some of of Ben Affleck just as Ben Affleck coming through, <laughs> you yeah. know. But it, uh, I'm sure you've seen the meme of Ben Affleck when he's been interviewed originally for Batman versus Superman, and just it's like. Uh, I think the song that comes over is Hello Darkness is my friend because he's so depressed and sad. He's just like, mm. sad, sad, bad flick. <laughs> oh dear. So were there any other standout moments for you that you would like to talk about? Oh, let's see. There was, um... I mean, Darkseed and his Omega Beams. I know every fan. So, because that's like one of Darkseed's biggest traits is that he's so powerful but he has like superman vision but they just follow you and they're incredibly powerful and they're so quick you can't really outrun them so when we saw that one moment where he did the that was every geek screaming in the world uniting in hallelujah well that that was cool and um because that's the scene um when they're actually telling the beginning right where they yeah. have um where all of the you have Zeus and Artemis and so cool. Amazing scene. Yeah. I thought, well, see, and I loved that because it sets up, it, it gives us now some context for why these, what these mother boxes are, why they're being sought after, what, what makes them kind of important, you know, and you get to see the power of this, this really big bad guy. Um, and so, yeah, and I did, I did enjoy that. Um, I'm trying to think there weren't any i don't think there were any moments necessarily that like i just you know stand up and like yeah that was that was great because I, mean, I was I, 
I was sucked in the entire time. You know, I mean, every, every time it went about, I'm like, Oh, cool. I do think eh, maybe. Okay. So when I'm still, I still geek out just even from when it happened in Dawn of justice, when wonder woman appears and that guitar riff happens, you know, uh, that, yeah. that, that kind of announces her. And then you, we get that in this too. And that's, I just love that. I mean, that doesn't really have anything to do with, with what's going on on screen, but it's just that it's that auditory cue of like, Oh, something cool is really about to happen. And I just love that riff. Yeah. I do think a junkie, I think it's junkie XL school scored it and uh he has this way of uh, moving from score to the themes you know of your era so we had the superman one we used to we had the wonder one one even batman and so it just it creeps in and out and so it, i think it often comes in way before you even see wonder woman and so you're ready without you know subconsciously you're hearing it and then by the time she comes on you're like oh yeah that's that's the thing they're doing the thing it's very cool <laughs> yeah were there any uh, big standouts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I was more uh, surprised by the amount of footage that my, my jaw just like, why wouldn't you have that in the film? <laughs> like, I, I think I was getting angry. It's like, but that's so much better. You've added so much more storyline. Uh, that big, long, embellished scene that we had, um, as we were just talking about with uh, the Green Lantern um, and uh, Zeus, and all the other superpowered beings, you know, the one with the arrow and we had the, the vice versa army. I was like, I was getting end of, what was it? The, the Marvel final, you know, the final oh, Marvel yeah. scene. Yeah. End game. You know, I was like, ah, yeah. Comparison, big you know, army. But what I really liked about it was they're showing how strong the bad guys were. So then we have so much more weight when we get back to our timeline that adds more uh, fear and so your superheroes just aren't overpowered because that's the worst. There's, there's, there's no, there's no, uh, terror. There's no, you know, you're not scared for them because, well, I'm Superman, you know, what have I got to be scared of? I'm Wonder Woman, you know, I'm half God. Uh, <laughs> but now Steppenwolf, I felt carried much more, um, fear and you knew his boss because we've seen him now properly. And you're like, yeah, he's scary. He's got some power. And I think that was probably a really good, maneuver to get your audience like engaged with oh crap if that if those guys are coming yeah we're gonna have some serious issues and so you hooked you're there right on. yeah definitely <laughs> great so um uh, talking about all superhero stuff uh, i presume you know uh, totally off it on to a different film the batman has finished filming yes which is great news we're finally going to get it uh what do you think about that? I'm excited. Honestly, I want to see um, what Robert Pattinson brings. Mm. You know, um, I, I'm so thrilled that over, over the last chunk of years, he's broken free of his shiny vampire persona, you know, that he's actually had that opportunity to really show what he can do. And, um, you know, I mean, we've had so many different Batmans. And yeah. so like I said, you know, everybody, you know, everybody latches on to who who is their their favorite or what you know this this nuance of this one that i like and i i'm really curious just to see how does he play him what is it going to be i've seen i've seen one trailer the very yeah. first teaser one that came out um that basically broke the internet um <laughs> and you know and i, I loved it because what is it he he ends it with i'm vengeance i think yeah. something like that you know i'm like ooh. Okay, so this is definitely, I mean, Batman's a dark character as it is. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's why a lot of people really like him. That's why I like him. And especially because also he's just a human dude. You know, he's just, just a rich guy. guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but to watch this, see how they're going to take it and see how Matt Reeves is going to just frame it in the story and um, what avenue is it going to take us down? And I don't know. Uh, and then that's really out of my own um, imposed ignorance because I don't want to know too much about the movie going in. Um, so I've stayed away from, you know, articles about it or anything is I don't know. I don't know where it's going in a timeline. I don't know who I, I think there. I mean, there was uh, I know that there's Colin Farrell. Um, I don't even remember some of the other um, villains that they have in there, but I don't know where they're taking the story. You know, I don't know if they're if 
if Matt Reeves has several lined up, like he has a, this larger vision, or if it's just kind of like maybe a little bit like the Joker, where it's a almost a standalone feature where we just get this epic movie on this one dude. Yeah, I'm kind of on board for that, I think. We've had so many trilogies and drawn-out stories. Having one contained story about the bat, I think, would be really, really good. Um, the reason why I brought it up compared to uh, the Justice League is I have a friend that's um, actually, well, he's just finished working on it. I can't say who he is. Uh, but he mentioned that um, there's 800 hours of footage to edit with. And I was just like, What? how much have you been filming apparently they're really really long takes and then just do them again and again and again because matt reeves just wants he wants his shot you know and he's not happy until he's happy and obviously they've done so much reshooting and then in between covid it's just been uh yeah so that's a little bit of a, a exclusive i can't say who it is but yeah he uh yeah it's like you won't believe how much uh footage we have yeah that that that, that sounds terrible and awesome all at the same time from an editor yeah. standpoint oh man i don't want to be the edit editing that oh my gosh no but what you, you said about long takes i mean that really excites me like i love long take scenes and so if if they're going to include a bunch of those i mean I, i'll geek out just on that alone yeah i mean i do i love um clever I, I guess you call them one takes, you know, steady cam shots where they've planned everything out and people, you know, you have various action calls because you need the person to start walking or you need that explosion as the car comes past. And then you have that fight sequence. And I mean, obviously 19, what was it? 1911? Uh, was, yeah. Where it's just, oh, 1990. Yeah. Where it's um, all one shot kind of cleverly edited. And yeah. So if they can do that with a Batman, I think it's going to be an interesting Batman. It's going to be a, different style yeah, yeah yeah i'm excited for it I, I really am looking forward to it and hopefully theaters will be open yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the screen. i don't yeah in my area at least there's there's nothing really open so yeah no nothing here either so well i went on a massive tangent there <laughs> we, we sidetracked um, but if you're watching this, uh, let us know in the comments below which was your favorite kind of spoiler moments. What was, what was the standout moment? What were you hoping to see? Maybe there was a character that you were like, oh, man, I really wanted them to be in this. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get an extended edition of Zach, Zach Snyder's director's cut. <laughs> now, that's interesting, too, because I read that, um, you know, it's told in six parts with an epilogue. And originally, I think that HBO Max was going to do it almost as a series. So, yeah. that, so that you could stop, you know, at the end of part one, come back to it the next day or whatever, you know, and pick right up. And the movie does play out that way because we do have it fade to black. Yeah. So, we got the titles. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it plays out well like that. I think, though, to to break it up as a viewing experience. Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. that, I don't think that even though it is long, I don't think that watching this, this movie is a, is an episodic type of thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's still one, you know what I mean? One contained movie just because he has it fade to black to give us some subtitled, um, you know, breaking points. It just feels like an epic, like, you know, back, I mentioned in my review, like Cleopatra, Ben-Hur, you know, it's that sort of massive epic that you just kind of need to settle down in for most of your day and <laughs> and enjoy it. One thing we haven't spoken about, uh, which was unique to the film, um, is the aspect ratio. What do you think about that? At first it bothered me, or at least it took me off guard a little bit. It caught me off guard. Because um, <clears throat> I know that it was filmed for IMAX. And so, you know, it's meant to be on this five story type of just massive screen. But yeah. when we watch it at home, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So I have, you know, I have, it was almost a, um, basically like a four by three uh, ratio, except I think it was like one to one or almost like 1.3 to one, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, but it, um, at the beginning, it caught me off guard. It was not 
bothersome necessarily um because we've seen it before i mean lighthouse um yeah. you know uh there was i think there was one or two even movies that i watched uh, during sundance that had that so that we are seeing that here and there um mm-hmm. in our modern cinema but as the movie went along my brain adapted to it and it didn't bother me anymore yeah. i have spoken with some people um just through through the comments and they're like yeah this is <clears throat> this is really probably the biggest hurdle that I have. And I, you know, and they're even acknowledging that they understand that it's a, um, it's a personal hurdle. You know what I mean? Some people are like, I had to get over it or whatever, but I mean, a visual experience like this, I mean, it comes into play a lot. Yeah. You have to, if, if, if something like that is going to break you out of it, um, I think that's unfortunate. And so how can we as, or how can filmmakers, you know, work to, to better not break people out of that, that experience? Yeah, I initially thought it was a technique that he was using to show the difference in time. And I expected the bars to come back later. Because I know um, even Amazon did an original series with uh, Julia Roberts uh, where – yeah, and then the aspect ratio for the past was that square, almost like phone. And then in the present, it was, you know, we get our normal 16 by 9. So, so I expected that to happen. And then I was like, first hour, second hour. I was like, oh, this is not changing. <laughs> it's, it's just staying. It's like, okay, got to get it in my head. Uh, and like you said, you do get used to it. But it was, a, it was an interesting choice. Yeah, it was. Well, and I thought, too, like, when I think back to uh, The Dark Knight, you know, Christopher Nolan had some IMAX scenes yeah. with his, and but it um, it was still the widescreen format. All it did was yeah. this way, and then it would just squeeze back down a little bit. And so it was. This was an interesting way to do it. Um, I, I'm curious at what, <clears throat> as as it gets released, um, and people have the opportunity to watch it. Does it does it bother? Does it not bother? Do you do you, you yeah. know? Do you even notice it? You know, had we had we not said anything, did it even would you have even paid attention to that? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it was clear. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so what other Warner Brother big blockbusters are you, you looking forward to coming in? Because they seem to be the only ones that really that are doing like they've got it planned out, man. Their list is intense. Yeah. So uh, Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah, so that's the end of the month, right? I, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. That I, <laughs> I expect just destruction. I, yes. mean, I think it's just going to be a lot of fun. Um, I've I've done my best to stay away from any any social media about it. Any, um, I think I saw. I I did watch the very first trailer. You don't want to be influenced too much. Exactly. Yeah, I just want to. I want to go in and I want to experience it, and I want to just be like. You know, yeah. the, 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 when Godzilla came out, I mean, I was just like, uh, I mean, when I saw the trailer, I was like, I don't really know what's going on. I mean, I've seen the movies, the predecessors of this, but I don't totally remember it. I don't live in the world. So I'm like, ah, you know, and when I saw it, I was like, hey, this is entertaining. I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, I think, yeah, we're watching these giant monsters and that's what I want to see. And that's what I expect to see in this. I think it's going to be even more epic. Um, I'm curious at how they're how they're really tying it in and who who is the good guy and who is the bad guy. Yeah, because I like both, right? I really like Godzilla. I also like King Kong. Like, I'm just going to be upset. Don't hurt each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so are they going to introduce a new baddie? So I, yeah. I don't know. There. I mean, um, let's see. What uh, Dune is Dune still yeah. coming out this year? Supposedly, <laughs> who knows. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I really, I'm, I'm curious at what the vision is going to be, how it's going to. Um, Visually, I think it'll be stunning. Agreed. Agreed. Is this the need, uh, how do you say his name? Villeneuve? Dillaneuve? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I apologize. We apologize for mispronouncing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, yeah, visually from what I've seen from stills and even that first uh, teaser trailer, I mean, it looked beautiful. Yeah, that I think just I'm, I'm yeah I can't wait for that as well. Um, 
gosh, I don't even know what else is on the slate now. My brain is. Yeah, there's a there's a lot because so much has been put back. You know, we don't even know when we're getting Bond now. Uh, you know, is will that film ever come out? Who knows? D- does it even exist? Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, it's it's all a marketing ploy based it's around a trailer. trailer. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Uh, Mortal Kombat. I'm actually looking forward to that. That I, I I am looking forward to just a bloody action movie. Like I yeah, just go for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think I from what I saw from the trailer, I was like, oh, you're you're really going for it. You're not gonna. I mean, because it's they went for a hard R rating. Oh man, they did a, a um, fatality. You know, it was great. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's what, if you're going to make a movie based on that game, just go all in. You can't not. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I want good choreographed fight sequences that don't, doesn't hold back. And I want all the, the cheesy get over here, a fatality, you know, just do the game, but in movie style, you'll make fans happy. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why we're going to see a video game movie, right? Yeah. If, exactly. you can, if you can deliver some of just this epic fight, and I think with a like the long takes would be amazing in this because you you can have the fight going on and the camera, you know, swinging around. Uh, man, yeah. As long as they don't do fast cuts, you can't see the fight. No, <laughs> I don't want that. Yeah, I want to see the action. I want to be at some points up close with it. I want to see, you know, them going at it. And then I want to pull back and I want to see the grandeur and the actual, the moves that they're all doing and, you know, the the time that they spent to choreograph these fights. Yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be great. Yes. Uh, John Wick was great for seeing the moves. Uh, but if you go back and watch some of the older um martial art films even the original Mortal Kombat one they do the fast cutting you know all the the kicks where they don't really touch each other they're just doing like spinny flips and you're like what are you doing are you dancing it's it's funny yeah so fingers crossed it's good yes yes it it it, uh, well at least epic and bloody there (laughs) well I think we've digressed enough we've spoken about Warner Brothers at length (laughs) Maybe we should leave it there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Absolutely, Ruben. This has been this has been great. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm thrilled. First off, that we just we get to connect, and this is my yeah. first time ever chatting with a fellow YouTuber um, on video. So this has been outstanding, and I'm really glad too that we we got a a surprisingly amazing movie. You know, in, about it. yeah, yeah Justice League. Yeah, you know, I yeah. mean, uh, like you, like I said, you said in your review, you know, you, you keep your your um, expectations in check. You know, yeah. right? going in and um, knowing, I mean, especially coming off of what was, you know, it's hard to to kind of not keep that in your head and, and do the comparison, but just look at this. Okay, what is this? Is this is this a complete vision? Is this a a story that was told well did they develop characters did they not develop characters you know what how is this and i think despite its length snyder gave us something that that's really enjoyable and i think a lot of people like me even were skeptical and i think a lot of people are going to be surprised by it at how how much they get invested in the story you know that yeah, i agree yeah, we have the characters who are now developed. We have a villain who has a purpose. So all of that melds together and really gives us something that we can go, "Wow, that I, I'm glad that this is what we got to see." You know, we get to watch um, all of these heroes come together, even though they don't necessarily like each other all the time. You know, and they have <laughs> different motivations, even, but yet still coming together. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm excited for, for everybody else to see it now. I'm really happy for the fans. Cause it, it does feel like Zach has gone, here you go. This is what we wanted. And this is my love for the fans. And this is a film for the fans. Although if you're not like a diehard fan, I think you're still going to love it. So I think the geek in you will come out. Agreed. Yeah. I think, I think if you, if, if you can enjoy a good character story, 
you know, and, and the fight of good versus evil type of uh, genre, then this, there is something to, that you can latch on to in this. I mean, I understand that, you know, people that just stray away completely from the superhero genre, th- this isn't on their radar. This is not something that they necessarily are drawn to. Yeah. But even if you're on the fence about this, I mean, despite the link, um, that's probably the biggest detractor for anybody who's just kind of on the fence for this, that you go in and you see, you know, you get to watch the development of a couple of characters and watch watch their arcs grow. And um, even... I mean, it was interesting to see Aquaman. Um, I think maybe we could have gotten a little bit more. Mm. Well, it's weird because, you know, we've, we've seen them. We're getting this movie after we've had an Aquaman movie, you know, but in yeah. that context um, with, with his interactions um, in Atlantis and that standoffishness that he has towards the Atlanteans, um, that did feel a little weird, mm. I guess. You know, um, but I think I think it works, especially now in our world that we we have the ability to have seen Aquaman <laughs> as a movie and understand his context and just can kind of gloss over some of those parts. Well, I think now when people watch uh, kind of Zack Snyder's universe, we have a new film. I think a lot of people just won't watch Justice League um, and then. I guess we'll watch this one before Aquaman and Wonder Woman. And so in that context, context, it'll be really a lot of fun because now, you know, you've got all of those. And so that even makes this film even better because it has given so much more weight to those characters. And so now some of those films that you thought weren't as good might be better because you've got more weight and character development, which is great. Absolutely. So do you think we're going to get a cyborg movie? I would love a cyborg movie, but, um, I know we got a flash uh, and I know there's call for a cyborg movie. I think it all comes down to whether COVID opens up the world again um, and whether the flash actually happens. If flash happens, then, you know, who knows? We might get a standalone cyborg with a couple of the others jump in. That seems to be the way they're going now. They're not doing so much connected universe, but more like standalone. And then you'll have, you know, so-and-so jump in and say, Hey, I'm here to help you for this sequence. And then, you know, jump off. Or motivational speech, you know, like Daredevil. (laughs) Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't before, check out The Ruby Tuesday. I've linked his channel in the description. Give him a watch and consider subscribing. So what were some of your favorite parts of Zack Snyder's Justice League? Did you have any parts that you disliked? Also, what did you think of that post-apocalyptic end scene? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this discussion, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.